So it really is for the sisterhood, and by sisterhood, I mean all women, even though we center the needs of women of color. Um, and, you know, the truth of the matter is that CBD is a miracle plant, and cannabis is a miracle plant. Welcome to Come Back with Erica Cobb, a community of folks like yourselves who are getting ready and staying ready for their next chapter. Well, my next guest certainly has had many iterations of chapters, including being a serial entrepreneur. So I'm going to bring her in because this queen is so bad. Okay. You'll recognize her as a go-to voice for platforms like E, The View, and The Tamron Hall Show. She is an award-winning producer, host, content creator, and serial entrepreneur who is the co-founder of Brown Girl Jane. Yes, you'll recognize that box behind me. The first and preeminent plant-based CBD collection center women of color. Ty Beauchamp, welcome to Come Back with Erica Khan. So you are a serial entrepreneur, which to me just means like I'm such a boss that I can do- Or I'm tired. Of this. <laughs> I need a nap. No, <laughs> maybe I just need a nap. <laughs> We're like, yeah, those 15 minute naps on an office floor is a very real thing. Uh, but yes, absolutely. Tell us what the mission of Thai Life Media is. Thai Life Media uh, seeks to create stories and advance uh, content that empowers and inspires women to live their best lives. Uh, when I started Thai Life Media, it was I was completely an accidental entrepreneur. Um, I I left publishing for my first iteration after burning out at 26 because I had advanced um, the ladder very, very rapidly. And um, this was at a time when there was no social media, so we didn't really talk about it. I was just doing it um, alongside a, a, a few um, very talented, but very few other black women in that space. and. Um, I just knew that I wanted to create impact and it was accidental in the sense that I left publishing and I went into philanthropy and I started to develop these programs um, in Newark, New Jersey, one of which is still uh, operational and is run by Rutgers University that I started called Are You Ready for Work? Um, and it was a completely, it was a departure from what I had done before, but I fell in love with um, leveraging resources from corporate organizations and philanthropic organizations to impact community. And then when I went back to publishing as the editor of Vibe Vixen, which I did simultaneously, I didn't know that was being an entrepreneur. I didn't have examples of entrepreneurship in my life that way. Um, my family are all educators um, in the Newark public school system. And so I was just like, I'm just doing this and doing this. And then I started to realize that there was a real void. Um, and I've always loved problem solving and business solutions and loving business. And so I married the two. Um, and fortunately for me, I was able to leverage some of the relationships as well as all of the knowledge that I had banked um, and experienced as, as my time in, in, as an editor to, to forge ahead and say to brands, like you could be doing a better job empowering women through this storytelling. Um, so that's what Thai Life Media does. Uh, we're still operational and, you know, we have uh, an amazing team of people. Shout out to all of my team members, uh, Giselle, Natalie, Shakora, Zag. Uh, you know, it, it takes a lot. Um, and at one point we had nine staff members. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun thing to do to know that also I'm doing something that I love, but that is purpose led and people centered. Okay, you are, you're just such a pro because I'm like, uh, I can't get to my questions without her answering or- <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 I just, I wanted to talk to, about Brown Girl Jane, but you said something that I have to skip over for a second. So we're gonna get back to Brown Girl Jane. Yes, You okay. talked about your time in publishing and how there were very few other examples of black and brown women. Now you were actually, the first black and youngest beauty and fitness director at 17 Magazine. And we celebrate first, like <laughs> love to see it. But there is no handbook on how to be the first. The culture doesn't automatically change because you're there. Um, you know, people aren't going to make sure that you are necessarily elevated any more than anyone else is. And sometimes even less. 
So what advice would you give to someone who is a first on writing their own handbook, if you will? Wow, I love that question. Well, the first thing I'm gonna say, no pun intended, the first thing, um, is ensure that when you enter a space as the first, that it is your intention not to be the last. And I, I, I feel very strongly about that um, because, you know, <laughs> being first, it's not about the responsibility, but I think we have a real opportunity to learn and then redeposit what we learned so that way other people don't have to come in and experience those same experiences as a first. Um, secondly, um, in terms of, you know, what do you do? I, I encourage all women, especially even younger women who are still finding their way, um, when you are, you know, you're, you're faced with a barrage of kind of like all these ideas and notions of how you're supposed to be, how, you know, you're supposed to show up and who do you model? What I learned and what I think benefited me looking back in hindsight, I don't think that I knew this then. I certainly didn't know this then. I was too young and dumb to actually know. I was 25 when I became beauty director at 17. Um, but what I know was true of me, and I'm grateful for this because even when I reconnect with mentors from that time and space, and there were amazing people who championed me, who, who promoted me. Gail King was one of them. Ellen Levine was another. Carrie Diamond of Cherry Bomb was another. Um, my editor-in-chief, Amy Gross. I had some wonderful women uh, shepherds who, who really did what they could to advance me. But what I know is true, and I get this when I meet people that I worked with 20 plus years ago, is that I, I knew what was true about me. There were a lot of things I didn't know that were true. Like there were still facts that I was figuring out. You know, did I really love fashion that much? Did I really love beauty that much? Did I really love shopping that much? All of these superficial things. But what was anchoring for me is be true to the truest part of who you are, the truest essence of who you are. And that's centering around going back to spirit and emotion. So don't change. So, you know, I, I celebrated that I was the girl from Newark in those spaces. You know, I didn't run from that, even though this was a space that was literally um, mostly or often one field with women or people that were the daughter of, the niece of, or someone of. Um, I, I went in with what was most authentic to me, even as I was discovering those other pieces of me that I didn't yet know. So I think when you're first, get clear about those, those key elements of who you are. What are your values? Um, what is your mindset? How do you treat people? What is your character when you show up in those moments? Because even when you don't know, your character is what is going to save you and also uh, allow you grace and other people to grant you grace when you say, I don't know and I'm still learning. That's the truth. And so that's what I think um, the power of being a first is. <laughs> I love you. I love you back. <laughs> I love you back. Girl, you are just speaking to my heart. I'm like, I'm always oh. telling people like, why are you faking it till you make it? So to speak, like the people who have made it or have it know that you don't. So just come down to the least common denominator of competition, which is truth. Oof. Like if you're just who you are, no one can beat you at that. They can beat you at you trying to pretend to be that. Okay, my uh, studio looks a little different today because a hey. my brown girl Jane Box. Okay, so hey. tell my comeback community why this line is beneficial to them specifically because we do have a very large following of black and brown women, um, <laughs> but also just how you came up with this idea. Yeah, well, thank you. I have uh, two incredible co-founders and uh, my co-founder Malaika actually conceived the idea of Brown Girl Jane and introduced it to myself and her biological sister Nia. We're all Spellman sisters. Um, so it really is for the sisterhood. And by sisterhood, I mean all women, even though we center the needs of women of color. Um, and, you know, the truth of the matter is that CBD is a miracle plant. And cannabis is a miracle plant. And there are so many miracle plants. You know, plant-based wellness is just one of those things that um, is so untapped. 
um, and a lot of people have had reticence specifically around cannabis. Um, but after being on a plane in 2019, I was shooting a travel show. I was, I was on a plane and traveling more than 200 days out of the year. I told you about some of the anxiety and the jet lag and what have you. Um, and Malika sent me the product to try. And this was an early iteration of the product. And I had not tried CBD, um, um, but it made me feel less anxious. It made me feel a lot more clear. I started to do my research. We started chatting. And the reality is that we wanted women like us, um, black, brown, and all colors and all ethnicities and races and experiences who are trying to do all the things to feel more centered. So Brown Girl Jane is a plant-based beauty and wellness collection um, that provides easy solutions to everyday stresses. Uh, I love you so much. To my comeback community, listen, first of all, get your morning uh, mindset with Ty, okay? Thank On you. On her Instagram, Ty, where can we find you? Where can we find Brown Girl Jane and all the things? Well, okay, so Brown Girl Jane, you can find at, find at browngirljane.com and at It's Brown Girl Jane on Instagram. Tybo Shamp, you can find at Tybo, because I'd be knocking them out, T-A-I-B-E-A-U. And uh, my wonderful team member, um, Giselle, is going to make sure that I update tyboshop.com. So then soon enough, you can you can, you can can find tyboshop.com. Ty Beauchamp, thank you for spending a little bit of time with us on Comeback with Erica Cobb. And for my Comeback community, get the full podcast with Ty Beauchamp on my online home, comeback.tv. Until next week.